So we got something to talk about today, some really cool stuff. It seems to be quite busy here in the Transformer world, and it continues more with a topic that we talked about last year in December, which was the Transformers Reactivate video game. We had a whole bunch of different stuff that was shown and teased to us over that last year, and it was screenshots, we got the, the final trailer for it, we had some leaked FMVs and scenes from the video game that got taken down from YouTube, you know, a whole bunch of different things, listings and what the toys potentially are going to be, the story. And now we have, courtesy of Toys R Us Canada, we actually have some images of what this product is going to look like. We have one of these two packs here that we've seen the listings before and all the deep information, but now we have the visuals. Now we know how the packaging is going to look, how this is going to roll out, and of course, even more so, a price. Now there is, oddly enough, a disconnect between the name of this product and what the name of the video game is. The video game is Transformers Reactivate. This Transformer product is called Transformers Rise. We kind of knew about this because when we saw those listings and we saw Transformers Rise, we were told that this is real, real, pretty much related to the Reactivate thing. And when you look at the packaging and everything, it clearly is that. So I don't know what's happening. Is there going to be a change of the name of the video game to Rise? Are they going to just keep the Rise kind of trademark used just for the the toy stuff? And maybe that's a way to keep trademarks and IPs between Hasbro, the company, and the video game company behind the game. Who knows? Who knows? But that being said, this is interesting. So let's jump into it. We're going to talk all about this and break it down. So we have a Starscream that's a Voyager class, and a Bumblebee that's a Deluxe in a two-pack here. Much like the listings that we saw before, not much really has changed from the listings and the tech stuff thus far, which is it's a two-pack. Uh, in the two-pack, it kind of gives a little bit of an explanation that the Quintessons have taken over New York, and now the Autobots and Decepticons have to work together to fight against the Quintessons. In Transformers Rise, Autobots and Decepticons team up to stop the Quintesson menace before they take over the universe. And this is kind of one of these things where these two packs represent what the game is supposed to represent, which is you choose a side and then you choose a player. So it's Autobot or Decepticon, Bumblebee or Starscream. Which one do you want to have? And then it says, you know, choose your players. Fans could add to the unlikely, unlikely co-op to the collection. These two packs include an Autobot and Decepticon team up of Starscream and Bumblebee. So video game inspired alt modes, as they say here, Starscream converts into a jet in 26 steps and Bumblebee converts into a dune buggy in 20 steps. So let's talk about, first of all, uh, these alt modes. So we got a very Starscream looking, you know, alt mode. No surprises here. He's a jet. He looks like he always does. Not really reinventing the wheel in a lot of ways when it comes to Starscream. With the Bumblebee, we do have a dune buggy this time, something that's a little more off-road action. I guess it kind of works because it's probably going to be a, you know, battle-ridden, damaged environment in New York and going over crevices and damaged and falling buildings. And a dune buggy off-road kind of bumblebee works out like that. Uh, one of the things that they mention with the uh, description here, too, is the battle-damaged deco and accessories which if you look at the alt modes, you could clearly see there's a lot of like darker areas that are not uniform on it. Like Starscream on one side of his wing, he has some darker area on Bumblebee. It's all, all over the alt mode. I guess, again, to kind of convey that rugged, weathered environment that they're going through in a war against the Quintessons. When you look at the Bumblebee and the Starscream, they also have very clearly notable uh, alt mode weapons. Bumblebee has two guns that are clearly sitting on the front of his hood. And Bumblebee... Uh, you know, normally is not someone associated with weapons, but yet here they are right on the hood. And Starscream, of course, two Gatling guns. They clearly look like Gatling guns in the place of what would be his null rays or something in the jet mode here. This is obviously to convey in the video game, anyone who played like War for Cybertron or Fall of Cybertron, you know, in the alt mode, you were, you were just as armed and battle ready as you were in the robot mode. And this is kind of to convey that too where even in alt mode, Bumblebee has guns that he could shoot and everything and the battle damage and stuff. So it's pretty pretty decent. Um, when you get into those robot modes, and again, Starscream doesn't reinvent the wheel too much. It looks like 99% of Starscreams we've seen before, whether it be the shoulder vented kind of thing going on, the wings in the back, the null rays on the wrists. 
it's a Starscream figure, just in a different shape and a different coat of paint. You put it next to every other Starscream we've pretty much gotten before, with the exception of a few Unicron trilogy versions. You pretty much have the same silhouette, whether it be animated or, you know, even going to like all the different reincarnations that we've had from uh, from Cyberverse and stuff. It's just that that's the general look that they're going with here. So no big surprise there. Again, that black paint deco is seen in specific areas, not creating a symmetry. So again, his left shoulder has the black paint while the right doesn't to again, emphasize on the battle damage and stuff. I'm pretty sure at some point in the future, they're probably going to take these molds and release them individually without the battle damage on it. Or alternatively, you know, it's a seeker mold. So that means <laughs> there's probably gonna be a lot of uh, repaints into other characters. And when they do those repaints into other characters and other seekers, they could also reissue a Starscream without the battle damage. And then you get another sale out of it. So I could see that with the Starscream. The Bumblebee, again, the alt mode being very unique leads to a very unique kind of robot mode. And it is a very different kind of Bumblebee. Still shares some of the aesthetics. It's kind of a fusion of taking a Generation 1 Bumblebee and also, let's say, a Rise of the Beasts, you know, off-road dune buggy kind of Bumblebee, even though the, it wasn't a dune buggy in the movie, but he did have the big off-road wheels. You kind of fuse the two together and you kind of have that happy medium the, the with the, the wing kind of doors on the back. The chest still makes the front of the vehicle, but it's not 100% a movie Bumblebee, but it's not 100% a traditional Generation 1 Volkswagen Bumblebee. Even the head sculpt kind of conveys that too. It's a mixture of the two. Uh, and again, those two guns that were on the front are now two double-wielding Gatling guns in his hands. Again, that video game element, you could see the battle damage on one wing, but not the other. So they're really trying to play in that these are like these battle weathered kind of characters from the video game and, you know, bringing that video game storytelling into the plastic form to be retold in your playroom on the floor, if you will. They also say here, Rise theme packaging. Rise figures feature special packaging expired from the Transformers Rise video game with still images from the game. Look for more Rise figures to capture moments from the video game sold separately. So the background of the tray looks like it doesn't really convey much in terms of like that. I mean, I, I was thinking when they were describing it, something similar to Studio Series where they have the background of the tray could represent a scene from the movie. Maybe it's something that isn't shown here outside of the back of the package. Back of the package has two screenshots from the game, but the, uh, the tray backing or the cardboard backing doesn't seem to convey that unless it's something we're just not computing right now but again it and it, it says the rise video game so is there a rebranding of reactivate into rise is there something that maybe like i said is a licensing issue there is there is something that was absent from the last listing which was the mention of weapons being uh, shared between the characters but i mean at the end of the day the three millimeter peg or the five millimeter pegs have been pretty standard with transformers so you could probably, you know, swap them anyways. But again, it, that was also the more play up an element of, you know, in the video game when you pick up weapons and you can share them among different characters and stuff. So pretty interesting, pretty interesting. So let's talk prices. Uh, this is on Toys R Us Canada. So the price of this pack is $97.99. So 98 bucks Canadian, Canadian, which I'll say this right now for Americans. We overpay for our Transformers, so even if you transform this currency, no pun intended, and you translate it to American currency, which would come to about $71, maybe $72 at the end of the day, um, I don't think that's what it's going to cost. That's just us doing with our exchange and how it badly turns out. I'm imagining this might be a $69.99 item. It's a Voyager and a Deluxe. So a $69.99 kind of makes sense, but in the 71, 72, 73, it's a little buck, it's a couple bucks more than what it should be. So that's how I'm kind of seeing it roll out. Probably even cheaper. Maybe it might be 65. Maybe the Hasbro might even work this out. That'd be, you know, $59.99. This is again a video game item, which is very important to them. Because I, I've always felt that if you want to grow the Transformer brand, you gotta also attack areas where you're losing the Transformers brand. And that means like if you're losing in the toy market, that's because you're losing it to video games. So you got to bring Transformers to the video game market to get back that market. Kids play the video games. They like the product. They then go out and buy the action figures, much like how kids that were playing Among Us 
or if they're playing Minecraft or if they're playing Overwatch or if they're playing, you know, Fortnite, any of those things, they have plastic equivalencies in the toy shelves and kids might want to own those action figures or those plushes of those characters because they engaged with the video game first. And sure, it might not make a lifelong fan or collector, but it might make a sale for them. And at least that moves a couple of units outside of the hardcore collectors like me and you listening to this podcast that love Transformer toys and the story and the lore and the product. But this is very interesting. This is pretty cool. Uh, we don't have release dates yet, but it is, again, it showed up on Toys R Us's website. So it means that could be very soon, much sooner than we think. And uh, same thing with the video game. We don't really have too much in terms of like release dates and stuff. That big trailer trailer reveal that we got quite a while back, I think it was Splash Damage was the company that first showed it to us. Uh, we didn't have much information outside of, hey, check us out in 2024. You know, hey, we're, we're going to be in 2024. We're finishing. I think it was the closed beta was going to be done in 2023. Look, 2023 is almost over. We didn't hear any closed beta, so still need an update from that. Maybe we're going to hear about it over the next two months before the year's over. We'll, we'll see. But pretty cool stuff. Let me know what you think, guys. And this is pretty exciting because, again, the video game aspect of it is very important for the future of Transformers. And it's very, very important to this brand's continuation and success because, look, we just came off of a big Hollywood movie that while the toy sales were good, the viewership was not as strong. Earth Spark is kind of the same thing. Toy sales are not that really great in that case. And the viewership of the show, unfortunately, isn't as good as Hasbro and Paramount had hoped for. So this is the direction we could go. This is a way to kind of protect the brand and maybe grow some new people. Let's check it out. Let's see what's happening. Transformers Rise. Let me know what you think. And I'll talk to you again real soon.